In this video, I'm going to go through the process of UV mapping the grip and the handle. So UV mapping is uh, the way we make it so that we can put a 2D texture on a 3D mesh. I usually use uh, chocolate Easter bunnies as an example of uh, how UV mapping works. So with the chocolate Easter bunny, it's wrapped in a foil wrapper that has uh, prints on it of, say, the eyes, the whiskers, uh, the ears. And if you take off that foil wrapper, and flatten it out, it's basically like a texture map. So what we need to do is make a flattened out version of our model in order to successfully um, paint textures for it. So I'm going to turn off the grid and then I'm going to open up the UVD texture editor by clicking this button here and that will bring up the UV toolkit and the UV texture editor which is exactly what I want. Now right now this has UVs that uh, were uh, assigned to the primitives when we created them but if I click on this little checker button you'll see that they checkers look pretty messed up. Ultimately, when we're creating our UVs, we want the checker map to be nice and evenly square on our mesh. And you can see here, they're all uneven. Down on the bottom here, they look completely messed up. So what I want to do is start by doing a base UV mapping that will uh, allow us to add our own seams and then unfold it. So I'm going to select the object and then go to create and I'm going to hold down shift and click planar and I want to do a planar mapping of this in the Z axis because the Z axis is the axis that most of the faces are perpendicular to. So I'm going to click Z and do project. And then on these faces on the bottom here I'm going to select those and make sure I didn't accidentally select anything else, which I did. And with these faces, it's the Y axis that's perpendicular to them. So again, I'm going to hold down shift, click on planar and choose Y axis and project so that that is there. So I now as soon as I do that, you'll see that there's now this white border on the uh, faces down here. That means that there is a seam there. And I need to add a couple more seams. Um, one place I want to seam is along this edge where the grip and the handle meet each other. So they're two different materials, so I'm going to have the UVs for them be separate. So I selected edge double clicked on that edge and then I can go to cut and sew and cut and that has added a seam there. Then I want to add another seam so that I can basically flatten out these pieces because right now they're all attached so there's no way to flatten them out. So I'm going to choose the edge that's right in the middle here. I'm going to Go in and select that little edge and then come up and double click that one so that the edge is selected all the way up the side. And then I am going to go cut so I now have a seam here. So I've added three seams, the one on the bottom, this one going up the side, and this one going here. And I'm now going to right click, choose UV shell select all of those UV shells, come down to the Unfold tab, and click Unfold. And that has now unfolded each of those pieces into a shape that's proportionate to the overall shape of the mesh. So if I turn on the checker, you'll see that now the checker is pretty even for each of those, the scale of this one is a little bit different, and the checkers are actually square, which is what we want. So a couple more things that we can do. I'm going to come down to Arrange and Layout and choose Orient Shell. And then I am going to come up to Unfold and 
click optimize a few times and you'll see as I do that the shape of this is changing a little. What that is doing is making it so it will have the least stretching possible. Um, eventually you'll see that you can keep clicking and it's not going to do a whole lot. So I'll choose orient shells again and then turn on the checker again and you can see that they're now all lined up pretty nice and evenly. The squares are all evenly square except for the bottom here. So what I want to do next is get the texel density, which a texel is a texturing pixel. So I want to get the texel density of this piece so I can apply it to the other two pieces. So I'm going to go to transform and scroll down to where it says Texel Density and then Get and that just got the Texel Density for that piece and then I'm going to select these two UVs again I was in UV Shell mode and choose Set and those all three pieces are now the same Texel Density so you can see that the checkers on all three pieces are the same size. So ultimately all three of these pieces are going to need to go into this square, um, but we'll also need to fit the head in there too. So I am going to start by scaling those down a little bit. And I want to rotate these around. So again, I'm going to go into the transform tab and where it says rotate, I'm going to click this way. And I'm now going to just temporarily move these around. I'll, I'll move them around a lot more once I do the UVs for the head. Uh, and to rotate this a little bit, I'm going to hit E for the rotate tool and make that vertical. And for right now, we'll say that those are done. And in the next video, I will go over the process of UV mapping the hammer head.